Okay, folks, just two more minutes and then we shall be presenting the Keith McElroy Memorial Award for 2020 in two minutes. Thank you for joining us at 11 o'clock, everybody. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Paula Martin up in Scotland, who's going to be presenting the 2020 Keith McElroy Memorial Award. Paula, over to you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you loud right. and clear, Paula. Okay. The Keith McElroy Memorial Award is made in memory of Keith McElroy, who studied archaeology at Cambridge, then worked as a research assistant with Colin Martin in the Institute of Maritime Archaeology at the University of St Andrews. This involved him in work on Dartmouth, Trinidad Valencera, El Gran Griffon, as well as his own work on Kenemolant. Later, he worked on the Mary Rose. In 1977, he went back to Cambridge to do a PhD and in 1980 joined Sean McGrail's underwater archaeology team at the National Maritime Museum. Later that year, however, he died in a diving accident while working on a Cranog in Loch Tay. The award is for a work in English, which, in the opinion of the panel of judges, best reflects the interests, aspirations and high scholarly standards of Keith McElroy. And here are some of the previous winners. The call for nominations in 2019 produced only one book, so it was decided to hold the award over for a year. And in 2020, four more books were nominated. I'll talk briefly about all five and summarize the opinions of the five judges. Bridging the gap in maritime archeology, span working with professional and public communities, edited by Katie Bell, published and nominated by Archaea Press. Published in 2018, this offers a range of papers from a conference session held in 2014. These present interesting case studies of a wide range of maritime projects and the way in which communities have been able to participate and contribute. It provides a useful statement in time, but some of the information is now perhaps out of date. As is often the case with publications of conference papers, the quality is variable. It is perhaps a bit bitty and Anglo-centric, and there are some deficiencies in the editing, but it covers topics close to Keith's heart, and he would have enjoyed reading it. Transfer between land and sea, maritime vessels for cultural exchanges in the early modern period. Edited by Simone Carlo, published by Sidestone Press and nominated by Colin Martin. This is an interesting combination of papers from a 2015 international workshop held at the German Maritime Museum in Bremerhaven. 
The theme is the role of shipping in the processes of globalization during the 16th and 17th centuries and the unique contribution shipwreck archaeology can make towards understanding these processes. We need to look beyond individual shipwrecks to the wider picture. The papers are quite wide ranging, some looking at cultural exchange over land as well as by sea. The papers are generally well presented, but as with all collections of conference papers, the standard and the depth varies. But there's much here which Keith would have found interesting and thought provoking. The Mercurio, Archaeology of a Brig of the Regno Italico, sunk during the Battle of Grado, 1812, by Carlo Beltrami with 15 specialist contributors, published by Brepols and nominated by Colin Martin. This is a clear and comprehensive multidisciplinary report on a significant excavation and an exemplar of best practice. It's an important project for non-classical archaeology in Italy and helps refute any idea that 19th and 20th century ships are so well documented that they're not worthy of archaeological study. It's a shame that the quality of the figures is variable, that there are not more colour images and that the book is so expensive. But once again, there's much here which Keith would have enjoyed and the judges commended this book. The Zeebrugge Shipwreck a forgotten early 16th century merchantman discovered off the Belgian coast by Hendrik Lettany, published and nominated by BAR Publishing. An unusual excavation report because the author had access to the finds but not to the excavation documentation which had been withheld by the project director. And he is to be congratulated for his heroic efforts in bringing this report to publication despite this handicap. The work presents the archaeology of an archaeological project as well as of a shipwreck. The authors produced a detailed study of the material culture of a late 16th century wreck, showing what an artifactual assemblage can reveal. Clearly a lot of work has gone into this and the production standards are high. Keith would have found the whole story instructive and fascinating. The judges commended this book. On the Ocean the Mediterranean and the Atlantic from Prehistory to AD 1500 by Sir Barry Cunliffe, published by Oxford University Press and nominated by Paula Martin. An excellent book, a wide ranging synthesis discussing developments over a wide geographical area and a huge time range, while never losing sight of the everyday and the practical. Cunliffe draws on science, psychology, seafaring and archeology span to weave a coherent and gripping narrative. An enormous effort, but very accessible and readable. It continues from the author's previous three volumes with sea themes, covering a broader area, both the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, and a longer time scale. A deep synthesis of multidisciplinary strands of thinking, record and investigation, providing a human focus to the relationship between past peoples and the sea over the long period covered. Keith would really have enjoyed this. Keith would have found all the five entries interesting and stimulating and would have enjoyed discussing their merits. As ever, they're very different and it's hard to assess them against each other. However, the judges were unanimous in their decision that the winner of the Keith McElroy Memorial Award for 2020 is On the Ocean by Sir Barry Cunliffe. It therefore gives me great pleasure to present a virtual award to a virtual winner. I informed Sir Barry of our decision a few days ago, and here is his virtual acceptance speech. Your email came as a wonderful surprise to enliven a long period of boring proof correcting. I'm truly delighted and honored to be thought worthy of the award. Would you please thank the judges for their generosity? Writing a book is a tough and often lonely task. To know that one's colleagues are prepared to recommend it as worth reading is a great reassurance and an encouragement to keep writing. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. That's great. So, um, folks, uh, Sir Barry's not able to be with us. Uh, obviously, the award uh, is here in Fort Cumberland. We will get it engraved uh, with On the Ocean by Sir Barry Cunliffe. Uh, and um, when will the next one be, Paula? When, when do we go for next? Is it 2022? Yes. 2022. Yes. So we'll put out a notice in the first, the beginning of 2022, for nominations closing April sometime. Okay, so please so, folks look out for an announcement uh, in April. Uh, no, announcement mm -hmm. next year. 
I would have thought in terms of a deadline. Why not? Let's put an announcement yes. out in 2021 with a deadline. The end of 2021 and yep. just get thinking. Excellent. Thank you, Paula, very much. That's the that's the Martin household done now. They've done three sessions this morning uh, and get to enjoy the rest of the weekend as conference delegates. Thank you, Paula. Goodbye. Bye bye.